everyone, Kyle Erickson here. This is the M2 MacBook Air with the latest chipset from Apple, and I absolutely love this machine. When it was announced, I was really hoping that we'd also see a desktop Mac mini with an M2, but since nothing came out, I picked this up and gave it a whirl, and it was consistently outperforming my M1 Mac mini. But there was still one problem. Using the M2 Air at my desk has felt a little bit awkward. Uh, because this setup was designed around a Mac Mini, I kept shifting the way that I was using this space with my MacBook. Uh, sometimes I just push everything out of the way and use the laptop as a standalone machine, and sometimes I'd plug this in and use it more like a desktop, but without everything that I needed to properly make use of this space which would usually result in me having junk all over my desk and cords all over the place. So I set out to turn this into a proper space, being a lot more functional with how I plan to work at this setup. Uh, that meant purchasing some new gear, keeping things that I like, and upgrading a few items along the way. But with the new MacBook Air, there are a couple things to look out for and consider when doing this. My top priority when turning this into a true desktop setup was to get my machine out of the way. Uh, while I could use the M2 Air at my desk, either below my monitor or on a stand off to the side, I actually prefer to have it closed up and just have focus on a single 4K monitor. To maximize the space available and to keep things clean, I wanted to find a vertical stand for my MacBook. And while there are a ton of them out there out on the market, very few will actually work with the M2 MacBook Air. One reason the M2 Air is so awesome is just how thin it is. It's only 1.13 centimeters thick, so I believe that is the thinnest MacBook ever. And while it is great for portability, it makes it hard to shop for a proper stand. Almost all of them won't go narrow enough to properly grab the M2 Air, and one of the only ones that will is this Hagibus vertical stand. It works for a variety of shapes and sizes by gravity locking to the machine, so the nice thing is if I ever move on to something else that's thicker, maybe a MacBook Pro, this will still work perfectly fine. Another reason why I chose this Hagibus stand was the color. My MacBook Air is starlight, and most stands that you'll see out there for Mac are going to be space gray or silver, so it doesn't really match well. Uh, I was able to pick this up in white to at least match my setup, but you can also find this in clear plastic or spend a few more bucks and get this in a gray alloy. By the way, with anything that I'm mentioning in this video, I will drop links in the description to all of it in case it piques your interest. But back to the MacBook, uh, with it closed and in the stand, the only thing that I have to do to make this work in clamshell mode is to make sure that I'm connected to a power source and an external monitor. One of the downsides to the MacBook Air both now and historically has been its lack of ports. It's gotten a little bit better on this version as it's added back a MagSafe charger, so while it does still only have two USB-C ports, you don't have to use one for charging. But I think we can all agree that even with an extra open one, two USB-C ports isn't ideal. Uh, in order for this to feel like a true desktop experience, I definitely want to have more ports available and not just USB-C either. Uh, to alleviate that, I picked up the Oracle TB3 S3 Thunderbolt docking station. I find this to be a nice compromise between super expensive Thunderbolt hubs, which can go upwards of $300 but still a lot better than cheap USB hubs, which don't offer the same level of speed and performance. Uh, I've got Thunderbolt 3 speeds available for connecting to high-speed devices that I use regularly, like this external SSD. Uh, there's multiple USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports that support 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, uh, easy access to an SD card reader and a headphone jack, and it also has fantastic build quality and looks great sitting at my desk with the metal enclosure. This dock station takes care of all of my needs. I run my display directly from that dock off the provided display port output that will give me 4K at 60 Hz, matching my monitor which is an LG Ultrafine 27UP850W 27 inch 4K monitor. This is 100% my favorite monitor out of a bunch of others that I've tried. I've had ultra wides, high refresh, and dual monitor setups, but what I like about this model specifically is it's color accurate out of the box, it's got thin bezels, and it's got a white back which matches my setup quite nicely. It also comes with a whole bunch of other features. If you don't want to use a USB hub or a dock, this will effectively act as one with USB 3 outputs on the back, 
You've got a USB-C port that will work as a monitor input as well as provide up to 96 watts power delivery. So with one cable, you can have a monitor output, a power and USB hub functionality. The Ultrafine 4K is an IPS panel that is color calibrated from the factory. And I do find the colors to be super accurate without having to do any kind of aftermarket calibration because it is an IPS panel and not a VA. I don't have to worry about things like black smearing and ghosting as much. And the 60 Hertz refresh rate is totally fine for the things that I use this for. I prefer a single 4K monitor because it provides me enough flexibility that I can split screen windows if I want, or I can have things full screened and maintain focus to a single area. Uh, I personally find it too distracting to have a dual monitor or an ultra wide setup. I know this won't be the case for everybody, but it's what works best for me. For those concerned about scaling on 4K monitors, I think that's somewhat overblown depending on who you are. Uh, for me, editing videos and doing tasks related to productivity, I found it to be completely fine and a non-issue, whether that be on the M2 Air or on my old M1 machines. I know other setups with wider monitors can tend to look a little bit better visually or have more of a wow factor, but with a 4K, I get high pixel density, it doesn't take up as much space, and I find it quite versatile. With that monitor connected, my MacBook connected to my dock and powered up in clamshell mode, I obviously need a keyboard and a mouse to do anything on the machine and my two go-to's there are the Logitech MX Keys Mini and the Razer Pro Click. I tried a bunch of keyboards recently and you've probably seen a lot of them show up on the channel here, both with chiclet and mechanical keys, but I still keep coming back to the MX Keys Mini. It just feels like the best fit for my workflow and it has great battery life. I rarely ever need to charge it and when I do, it takes no time at all. The only thing that I would change about is just switching up the multimedia keys at the top to have more control over navigating through tracks. But other than that, I absolutely love this keyboard. The same goes for the Razer Pro Click mouse. Uh, I've tried out a lot of mice geared towards productivity and I still keep coming back to this one with a close second being the Logitech MX Master 3. Uh, the MX3 does have a bunch of other features that the Pro Click doesn't, like a horizontal scroll wheel and advanced gesture buttons, but I find that the Pro Click feels a lot better in my hand. It does have quicker response times and more accurate tracking. And I like the step scroll wheel much more on the Razer over the MX Master as well. One of the things that I despise about the MX Master 3 is the scroll wheel. Again, that's my personal preference. I just don't like when it auto switches from the step scrolling to smooth scrolling. It ends up being unpredictable at times and produces endless scrolling when you're not expecting it. And I just like the simplicity of the Razer Pro Click. Speaking of simple, for my speakers, I've got the Edifier MR4 studio monitors. Uh, these are nothing fancy and are actually super affordable coming in at around $129. But by all accounts, these are some of the best sounding studio monitors in this price range. The woofers are made up of a composite material where a lot of more expensive edifier speakers are paper construction. So the build quality there appears to be a little bit better. And just superficially, I wanted white speakers to match the overall look that I've been going for in this space. Those speakers are sitting on Kanto S4 angled stands to make sure that I'm getting the best sound out of them by angling them up towards my head and reducing any desk vibration. And that takes care of the major pieces of my setup. But just as important in all of this, the things need to be functional and visually appealing in this space. I work here all day, so I wanna make sure that everything around me feels clean. I have access to everything that I need on a regular basis, and I'm surrounding myself with things that I love. Part of that is the mat that my keyboard and mouse is sitting on, which is from Harbor London. Now, you may have not heard of this company before, but they make super high quality handmade accessories for desks, laptops, and phones. I have the wool desk mat and the level of quality of this compared to a lot of cheaper alternatives is insanely noticeable. The materials are so much nicer and I also have their matching leather and felt folio sleeve for my M2 when I wanna take it out on the road with me. And same thing, the quality is just so much better than most cases or sleeves that you'll find. And they're a family run business too, which I think is worth supporting. Moving away from the desk and onto the walls, I've cleaned up the pegboard at the side of my desk and the shelf above my monitor. 
the pegboard before kind of felt cluttered and ended up being a dumping ground for little adapters and things that I didn't really have a place for. So I kept a few things that I use regularly like the headphone stand and the cable hangers, but removed everything else and put in some cool pieces. I have a chip I got from Mini Museum from the very first supercomputer, the Crane 1, and a framed iPhone 4S teardown from Grid Studio followed by the matching iPhone 5 and iPhone 6 frames on my shelf that replaced some things that didn't really fit well in this space. What I love about these pieces is they provide some history and sort of tell a story throughout the years from when I really started to get into smartphones and mobile development. They sort of blend technology with creativity and art, which really resonates with me. And there are a lot of great little inspirational quotes and information within them. They're also good conversation pieces as well. And I have to mention just completely separate from all of this, the packaging these come in is insane. They come wrapped in a ribbon with a wax seal, which I found really unique and a nice touch. With all of that in mind, I find this the perfect combination of aesthetics and functionality where I can be comfortable and keep focused, whether that be making videos or programming or even more casual usage like consuming content. The M2 MacBook Air provides me with more than enough power for those wondering, definitely more than the M1. Even with the M2 Air having passive cooling versus the active cooling in the M1 Mac Mini, and I'm really enjoying my experience with it so far. Uh, that being said, I would love to hear from you if there are any lingering questions about the setup or anything that you want to know. I will do my best to follow up and provide any info there that I can. As far as the products go, as I mentioned earlier, all the links for this gear are provided in the description below. If you enjoyed going on this little desk setup journey with me, hit that like button. If you want to see more tech related content, or if you think that we should get matching tattoos that we'll both instantly regret, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.